You're listening to We Deepen Media. Hey loves, have you heard about the other podcast on the We Deepen Network? First, Political Hope by Indy Rishi explores the lives, events, and minds pivotal for human evolution. Not always overly political, Political Hope is intended to empower you to recognize your inherent voice and ability to enact progress in your local and global communities. Second, Legends by Dr. Nikki is a journey to activate your fullest self-expression. Dr. Nikki interviews leaders who have transcended perceived limitations in order to make meaningful impact. Guests share their stories to teach you how to optimize your body, brain, and spiritual connection to manifest a truly fantastic life. Find Political Hope and Legends at WeDeepen.com or search for them now in your podcast app. Hit the subscribe or follow button and check them out after this episode of Deepen with Christina. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Deepen with Christina. I'm your host, Christina Weber, founder of We Deepen, Feminine Weapon, and also a certified professional love coach. While you're listening to this podcast, you'll notice two things about me. One, I'm obsessed with love. And two, I have become social chair for thousands of people who desire healthy relationships. We Deepen curates the best in class relational events, workshops, conferences, and festivals, all vetted through application and referral. Events like the Biohacking Conference, Magic of Human Connection, Respectful Confrontation, Unleash, Tantra Speed Date, Mind Travel, and Hum Hum. Go to WeDemon.com to learn more. You can become a member to receive specialty loyalty pricing and also connect with others who are journeying through these experiences that focus on growth first. In this episode 47, you meet Sean Derrick. Sean is genius at public speaking and giving workshops. Sean and I worked together from 2014 to 2016 on Underground Unattached, a curated dating experience attended by over 1,200 professionals and entrepreneur types in New York City. Sean helped me get over my fear of public speaking. I was once absolutely terrified to speak. It's ironic that I now have a podcast. With the biohacking conference nearing where I will be facilitating the dating dojo with psychotherapist Ken Page, I'm feeling a bit of anxiety. I envision the dating dojo to be the Yes, the showstopper of the conference. Based on nearly a decade of producing and promoting dating events, I know without a doubt, tons of love stories will start here. People will meet life partners, new best friends and mentors and connect more deeply with themselves. And also how revolutionary is it that an industry-based conference is to include a dating event? Dave Asprey, founder of the Biohacking Conference, and I talk about that in episode 44. I recommend listening to 44 and also 46 titled Reframing Polarities and Revolutionary Tools for Dating with Ken Page. It's the run right before this episode. Many women have written about how this particular episode has changed their life. To join us at the 8th Annual Biohacking Conference, September 15th through the 17th in Beverly Hills, California, make sure to go to WeDeepen.com and RSVP to get special WeDeepen member-only promo codes to register. If you can't make the biohacking conference, but still want to check out the dating dojo, Ken Page and I will also be facilitating it on Wednesday, September 14th in Los Angeles. And I will be facilitating the dating dojo at Unleashed Transformational Festival on September 23rd through the 25th in Austin, Texas. If you're listening after September of 2022, still go to wedeepen.com to check out the calendar and register for whatever experiences there are called to you. There will be many, many, many more and the calendar will continue to populate. Last thing before we get into this show, if you enjoy this podcast, please do follow, like, subscribe, and rate it on whatever platform you're listening to. It helps more people find it and also supports me in continuing to host it. Okay, so you're about to hear Sean Derek give me 
powerful insights to help prepare me for the dating dojo to make it the best experience ever. Note that your ears may take a moment to adjust uh, to the new audio track. Sean and I recorded this on Zoom. I promise it'll be worthwhile for you. Okay, here goes. Now, please enjoy Sean Derek. What's going through my mind and is um, I've realized that I will be at the end of my moon cycle Mm -hmm. when I am facilitating this and when I'm at the, those last days before the cycle starts are the days that you tend a woman from, I can't speak for all women, um, but it's actually data shows that it's generally the time where our hormones are lower and we want to go we're introspective we want to go inside and during this period of time that i want to go inside i'm going to be you know out on a big stage and i want to be prepared for that i have a month and so how do i best prepare what are some tips get me ready (laughs) uh sure uh well i guess i'll go backwards first the last thing you said was that you'll be on your moon cycle and so you'll be maybe low energy maybe is not the term but let's just say that let's just say that you you just said that you want to like cocoon right you want to go like all right bye i don't want to be around people well how many people do you think out of those a thousand will also be on their moon cycle or experiencing that that's actually a great question T- today when I was brainstorming. I was like, I wonder if I could like divide the the, the room and be like, which women are on thing? And I was like, wait, where did you just take this program? Right. <laughs> right. And some men on the moon cycle. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that, this is more for you, right? The idea is that uh, every time I'm feeling like I don't want to go out there on stage, um, you know, because we, we want to capture everybody. We go, okay, there's 2,000 people. I got to get 2,000 people's attention. It's like, no, you don't, you don't go for 2,000. You go one times 2,000. You're always talking to one person anyway. Mm. And so that helps for your authenticity. Because if you're talking to 2,000 people, first of all, that's not natural. How the hell do you talk to 2,000 people, right? Well, I was in a stadium full of almost 10,000 people. How do I talk to 10,000 people, right? No, it's one person. Mm. And that's where you get the human connection. That's where you hear people come out and say, wow, I felt like she was talking directly to me. Well, she was if she's talking to one person. But if you're trying to talk to everybody, you're talking to no one. So I would really uh, use wherever, wherever your energy is, be it low or high, and use that, right? Because then people will read your authenticity. You don't have to come and be anything that you're not, right? The first few seconds you come out on stage, they can read if you're real or not. They're just going, ugh, you know? And some of the warm up activities that we've done in the past um, that have showed through uh, UU, um, the warm up when you go on stage is to warm two, 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 uh, I should say, you're warming the audience and you're warming up yourself. You're seeing where the audience is and then you're warming yourself up, right? Just like you warm up your voice. And so there's some warm up, to, um, there's some warm up activities that I'm gonna take you through today that I think might be kind of cool since, um, you know, that help with your nerves a bit. Um, and then the second thing I'll say, uh, and this is not in any order, I'm just kind of like, as I remember what you just asked, um, nerves are so good. I can't explain to you. Usually when I'm not nervous is when I make mistakes. Um, uh, Forrest Whitaker is a very well-known actor. He, he's notably known for, uh, his work on the last King of Scotland. Uh, and his work was his, his character that played was so chilling. Right. And they're like, oh, I cannot believe Forrest Whitaker played this, this leader, this was ruler that did, um, awful things. Uh, and they asked, how did you, how did you, why did you choose this role? He said, well, I chose this role because I'm in this part of my career where I can choose anything. And he said, I chose this role because I was, a, I was afraid of it. And the nerves mm. told me that it's important. So nerves are there just to remind you how important something is in front of you, right? If you don't jump when a snake jumps in the room or um, well, you know, slithers in the room, you know, um, you might get killed you might get bit so the idea is that all of our reactions be it hind brain reactions they're very important and your nerves are no different right um so use that right um though practice and preparation prevent poor performance that's great i love being nervous it tells me that what's in front of me is important and this is a big deal biohacking is nothing small biohacking is the future and so when you're going and you're talking to these you know beautiful brilliant minds 
about how to get in touch with their emotions, right? That means you are the future. That's a huge deal, right? Mm. For you not to honor that is to also be inauthentic, right? Um, so those two things. One is use your energy wherever it is. Two is understand that nerves are good, a great thing that tells you what's important. And then three, you got to remember this part, and this will help you. Um, they want you to be there. And you're going to be in the room doing something that I don't care how brilliant these minds are, they don't know how to do. That's the point, right? So if I'm asking to, you know how you and I used to work together on uh, Underground and Attached, right? This uh, curated, uh, really uh, sort of out there dating experience because the first people were saying, get offline, get in person, right? We don't know what to talk about, right? If you're scared or if you're nervous on your first date, right? The idea is to always speak to what fascinates the person you're talking to. Let them nerd out on something. That is where you get people's attention. Let them nerd out, right? And this is your chance to nerd all the way out on all you know, right? About, um, you know, in-person engagement. You've been doing this for a very long time, right? They've not been doing what you're doing. So you get to go ahead and nerd out. And they nerd out on different things. And you can even say that, guys, this is going to be strange to a lot of you, you know, uh, <laughs> but um, this is what I nerd out on. And they'll, they'll respect that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then that way you light up because you're going to come in there as a light um, uh, so that it'll be easier for them to move, you know, a bit outside of their comfort zone, right? Um, what I usually have every time I do a workshop, especially with adults, uh, I don't care if they read my bio, I don't care if they know who I've worked with, it doesn't matter. There's always someone going, why the hell is this guy here? Right. And my favorite thing to watch is the transformation of the person who was just kind of like, ugh, <laughs> to, hey, man, this is actually pretty fucking cool. Thank you so much for doing this. And that is that is my 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 big takeaway, my big reward. When I walk away, I go, damn, like I I got that guy who wished I was, he was anywhere else in the world, but at my workshop. And now he's got some tools and distinctions to help him on his next few years in his journey. Amazing. So how do I, if, I've, if I'm speaking to one person, let's start there because you said one yeah. person, pretend like I'm, I'm speaking to, do I, when you go into it, is that you just, you look at the, the demographic of the audience that will be in the space and then you choose one archetype of a particular individual or is it that the day of you walk in there and you put your eyes on one particular person and you're like, that's the person and I'm going to speak to them the entire time. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh no, I'm, I'm not talking about presently look at one person, like while you're there. I'm saying that when you're talking to one person, you design your message and your activities around this person. You see what that person looks like. I don't mean, Oh, this is Heather. She's got green eyes. No, I mean, right. If you ask, what does this solve? Right. What, is, what are your activities solve? Right. For example, I'm working with the Department of Education. I say I'm teaching engagement strategies so kids don't get bored in school. Right. So my audience, I see that kid who's not listening to the teacher. Right. So then my activity is going to be de designed around that kid who can't pay attention. Right. Or who's just not being pulled. Right. His attention's not being his or her or their attention's not being pulled. So for you, I'll say, what does your uh, what do your activities solve? Right. Mm -hmm. We go in. This is for instructors. This is for speakers, storytellers, um, facilitators, managers. You got a big question, a big answer. Your big question is your problem or your puzzle. Right. In our office, we have low, you know, um, morale or in our office, people show up late. So it's not punctual. Or in our office, um, we have high turnover rate. That's the big question, puzzle problem. The big answer is. With my program, with I'm bringing to, right? Your students, your team members, your staff, right? will be able to do this now, right? So your before is your puzzle, your problem. Your after picture is the result, right? What would they be able to think, uh, feel, and be ready to do as a result of what you just brought in? So those are two things. And then you can couple the audience from there. Got so it. Let me yeah. Turn the mic around to you. Let me turn the mic around to you. Um, tell me some benefits of, you know, your the activities. Tell me the benefits of what you bring to the table. Well, so you have 2000 attendees, 200 of them are going to be in this space. And these are the, the people at the conference who are currently single. Mm 
Now, these are generally people who are interested in maximizing their entire life existence. And we know that the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your relationships. So here they are in the space and they're currently single and they're surrounded by people who have a similar interest to them. And so this experience is to, I'll say partly to quote unquote, break the ice. There's some type of breaking the ice and yes. facilitating engagement amongst them through mm -hmm. a lens of authenticity, play, joy, and also giving them tools for them to, to access that will support them in quote unquote, finding love. Okay. That's beautiful. So, um, I know the market, you can see this is a good way to start, right? You say, I know the some of the marketing on, you know, are the program description or workshop, workshop descriptions promises that this will be a dating, what was it? A you dating know? dojo. This is the right, dating, dating dojo. Dating dojo. Okay, great. So, uh, and I tell everything in story. You know me long enough, Christina, to understand that I tell everything in story. Uh, I was looking for a therapist and uh, this therapist had been just revered from all of my friends. You have to try this person, blah, 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 blah. And I was looking, you know, as to what this therapist covers, said, you know, a transition, relationships. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just looking for just someone just for me. And her answer was, well, what is what is the most important relationship you can have other than one with yourself? I say that to say that when you're saying you're the dating dojo, right? It's like, how can you talk to these people, right? About deepening the relationship with themselves, right? And there's a cool way you can do it. You can take the ring that you have off here and you can say, you can tell the story about how you married your dreams, feminine weapon, right? Because you have to, the reason why you want to always talk in stories is because we don't forget a good story. In fact, we learn through story. And mm. um, so this is why people are burnt out in meetings because we can't just record numbers all day in our heads and goals and, and stats and um, benchmarks, right? We need story to help us understand the importance of things, find the value of things, find morals, blah, blah, blah. So that's a great way to start is to say on blah, 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 2000 blah, I married my dreams, right? And tell that whole story. When you found out of it was that out of all the relationships that you've ever been in, Right, because you're on this journey. If you remember to find the perfect mate, uh, and I'm I'm paraphrasing. I might not, you know, but the, the, the idea was I'm on the journey to find this perfect mate. Right, but it wasn't until I blah. It's always that. It wasn't until I deepened my relationship with myself that I discovered blah 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 blah. So these first two activities we're doing is going to help deepen the relationship with ourselves. Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay. I love this. Uh, I'm thinking that I'll tell the story of what I will generally, um, when I speak about we deepen and where it began, it, it was that there was a eight month period of time that I had produced three concerts and a crowdfunding campaign for a woman centric brand, feminine weapon. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. at the end of that stretch, my mother asked me if I was dating anybody. And mm -hmm. I looked at her with this blank stare, like, dating anybody did you not see what i just did where do you think this man is hiding and i realized yeah. within that question that we have to inject energy in our desires and i was showing up nowhere in the universe so i was open willing interested in a relationship and i realized i needed to invest energy in that area of my life now at the time tinder was the new hot thing yeah i had never done any online dating i was pretty much anti-online dating However, now I had friends who I highly respected who are gorgeous mm -hmm. swiping on this dating app. So I thought, okay, mm -hmm. I'll give it a shot. And I did it for three weeks. I found it to be labor intensive and time consuming. I thought there's got to be a better way. Can we just get everyone into a room? So I en enrolled Sean Derrick, an engagement expert, and Dr. Sarah mm -hmm. Nazaratam, a, a social psychologist. And we developed a series of activities designed to foster connection, accelerate closeness. And I ran these dating experiences in New York City, eventually brought it out to Los Angeles. We had over 1,200 people come through. Everybody would fill out a questionnaire, five questions about themselves, five questions about their desired partner. I'd read every single one of them and have a one-on-one -on -one phone conversation with them. 
Now, these one on one phone conversations, I had wanted these conversations to be I thought they would be about like eight minutes, maybe sometimes though I'd be on the phone with people for 45 minutes of hearing their heartbreak and what they're navigating relationship wise. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And then I was having my own experiences with dating as well. And initially, I thought that I would just get everyone into a room and we'd all live happily ever after. Well, um, thank goodness that at that same time, we saw the rise of TED speakers um, and the books and people, the thought leaders in the quote unquote relationship movement, Esther Perel, Brene Brown, Gay and Katie Hendricks, Helen Fisher, John Gray, Alison Armstrong, Dr. Pat Allen. And I started obsessively studying all of their works to try to figure out how I can understand this for myself and how I can understand this for everybody else. And mm -hmm. what I um, what I realized is that while well, bonds build best over time, so we need people to see each other again and again and again, and people were craving learning relational skills. And also, we're more inclined to be receptive to meeting somebody else when we're in a state of play and joy and fun, when you're not kind of going out and like searching and sorting the room, like who here, yeah. who's possible here? We're searching, sorting, instead of looking at everyone and be like, how do I see everyone in the space and serve them in the space? Yeah. So today I'm, I'm now I'm practicing now, but today yeah. we're going to be in a practice of seeing the one in all ones and being the one in all ones within the space as we practice relational skills, which we have, Ken Page here, a, a psychotherapist and also the author of Deeper Dating. And mm -hmm. and we're going to be in say to Play. So so I think that's the story that's I go it. into it. It's that's, interesting that's where, I, where I neglect, though, not neglect. And some this happened over the weekend um, as well, where people became really interested around the, oh, you married yourself because I skip over that a little bit and I say, Oh, with the crowdfunding campaign, you know, three concerts in a crowdfunding campaign. I neglect to include that. Oh, I also married myself during that crowdfunding so, so campaign. This is, this is important. So when I'm training storytellers, our future uh, professional storytellers are going to go out and do corporate uh, conferences and do conventions and schools and blah, blah. Uh, I want to see how well they can tell um, stories in 30 seconds. So I'll say something like, what was your favorite Disney story i'm asking you christina what's your favorite disney story Amy. my favorite disney story can i tell you about my favorite instead of my favorite movie as a child can i change the question sure. okay i can but just give me the title give me the title uh, girls just want to have fun girls just want to have fun tell me it in 30 seconds what is it about there was that movie was it was it was it was a fun movie to watch as a child. I watched it again over and over and over. I um I loved the dance and the main character as she navigated, you know, her love life and This is perfect. Stop right there. Yeah. You're just describing your experience with the story without explaining. Story. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. This is, this I think I don't remember the story well enough to tell that. It's okay. Too. It's okay. This is why I usually say Disney stories, just because they're so ingrained. We've all seen them multiple times that we can kind of tell. If you say Little Mermaid, or if you say any of these things, uh, any of these stories, you can tell it in pretty much 30 seconds. And the reason why is um, a good story can be told in 30 seconds or less, right? And so what we tend to do, and people don't know when they're talking on and on, they don't know it. Because they're they're pooling, right? They're recalling. And they're like, this is good. You know, I'm going to get to the good part. Well, you're losing your audience. You know yet. And so to get to FW, Feminine Women, How You Married Yourself, you know that the most important thing is to get to that, right? So you had my attention when you said, my mom said, who you date? And you go, mm -hmm. I mean, I laughed immediately, right? So in order to get to FW, right? It's like, what are the things that are important? Now, there's a lot of things that happen in my life. A lot of things that happen today. I can talk for hours on what happened today. Mm -hmm. But that's not important to my audience, right? The important part is my relationship to myself. That's what I discovered. So when you're sitting in front of these people, because they're going to all want to know why is what we're learning important. That's what you have to prove, right? Mm -hmm. That's like, you have to be able to answer that. Why is this important? And you can't say, because it affects everything. I'll give you a question because you know, I'm sorry, I'll give you an um, example because, you know, I speak in story. I was asked to come on IG Live for global warming 
Now, I don't know anything about global warming. I mean, I understand it, right? But I don't, right? So I seconds before, I looked it up. I'm like, okay, cool. And they had a scientist on there, and she's explaining global warming. And I'm supposed to be the straight man who didn't know anything, which is perfect because I didn't. And um, she said, so, Sean, what do you think about it? I said, why do we care about this? And she said, because it affects everyone. I said, well, what is global warming? And she said, well, it's that. And she goes on. I said, uh, you lost me. You lost me. <laughs> if you want to tell a story, tell it simple, the simplest way you can tell it. She said, well, how would you say it? I said, okay, cool. I said, your temperature in your body is what, what, 98? She's 0.6. Exactly. I said, what happens when a, a, your body temperature goes up a degree or two? She goes, you have a fever. I said, then say the earth has a fever and these are the effects. You got to get to it quick. Mm. And then after, and then every time she'd say something, I'd give a story. I said, this is now you can't forget that. Right. And so you want to get to the good stuff as soon as possible. Right. Your points, marrying yourself. They didn't see that coming. Why is that important? Right. Uh, your relationship, right. Your connection to yourself, your association to yourself, your link to yourself. Right. You ever have someone that you dated and you said, I didn't even know who the hell that person was. Do you know why? Because he didn't either. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There, there are sort of faceless, maskless people. Uh, when I say vastly I facade, those people sort of walk around and they take on the shape of everything. They don't know who they are. And when you don't know who you are, you take suggestions. I love this. So in should I spend time preparing my opening? Because that's yeah. first impressions. The opening, I think once I once I yeah. validate why I'm there to these yeah. audience, then they'll listen easily from that point on. Yeah. So I'm, I, what I master in is reframing, right? I married two of my best friends together and uh, I told them, um, cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to do a ritual. I didn't want to do something traditional. I'm like, I'm, I'm not interested in that. And so when we decided to do this together, I said, okay, the ceremony starting, I said, Today, we're just going to have a conversation between this tribe. And we just talked it out, how their marriage was going to be. It was the most amazing. I never experienced anything like that. I know. I know. So instead of saying, you're going to learn this today, because they, they they're they going to learn things, right? You can either say experience or you can say, this is a social experiment in blah. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to be a part of that. Why? Because with experiments, you don't know what the hell is going to happen. That's a part of the adventure. Now, if you as the instructor know the end result of these most most brilliant minds that might exist on earth, right? It's no longer fun. So mm. you can say is when I do these activities, this is usually what happens, right? But I've been known to be surprised. So today we're conducting an experiment on blah. What I hope to get, what I hope that you'd gather is this, but let's see what happens. That way, when you got when you collect the information at the end, you have varying results, right? Everyone wants to be on the like, hey, this has been working this way, but like we're on the front end of discovering something big together. Imagine that you discovered your new way of uh, doing things uh, and seeing things, and even the way that you present things at the biohacking conference, because you've never you've never had these types of minds together doing this. So you're going to have a different result. Yeah, yeah, right? totally. Gone the days. That the expert comes in and knows everything. I, I, oh I don't do that. Oh my God. I'm so done with the preachers. <laughs> yeah. like, over, over, over the preachers. It would it be yeah. helpful if I take you through of the, so we have 90 minutes and the 90 yeah. minute program that we have planned. Sure. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to begin it. I'm going to open up the experience. So that is... Okay. Essentially, the warm up, my brief storytelling, setting expectations around what they will experience over these 90 minutes. I'll give also a little, maybe in my story, I think that would be good to combine these, but a, a, um, an introduction to We Deepen. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's part of me, of this story. Uh, I will then introduce Ken Page. Ken Page, so, so Ken Page is the, you know, he's an OG in the space. He's like in his 60s. He is a psychotherapist. He was um, in 2004 facilitating 
dating experiences or singles events for the LGBT community in mm -hmm. New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to then introduce him and, and, and kind of position him I, as, as the subject can I, expert. Can I jump in? Yeah. Um, so all of our friends back in New York City, right? Most of our friends were performers, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And the longer the bio of the performer, if I hadn't heard about it, and I'm like, dude, just bring, them, just bring the person out. Because if they're good, you don't need all of that. I don't need an introduction, in fact. Right. I just got back. I did Rochester and then just Chicago. I just got back. Right. And they said, Oh, um, I said, don't, you don't have to read. They just read these three lines. I'm fine. You don't want, no, they don't care. If I'm good, they'll see in the next few seconds. And I'm fucking fantastic. So the idea, right, is they have the literature. In fact, Ken Page is coming. They can read about it if they so choose. Same with you. Keep in story. Watch your introductions. Because here's another thing, too. If you tell me all the reasons I should like someone so much, right? You're putting the bar a little higher than it needs to be, mm. right? Short introductions, high intensity and high action, right? Okay, okay. All of the minutes in engagement, right? They don't, can, can, they'll care more when he does a good job. Cool, amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then yeah. Ken Page will come out. He'll do a little brief talk, um, yeah. um, interactive as well. Then we're going to yeah. do Neverland. <laughs> I love Neverland. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to okay. take about 15 minutes with Neverland. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, the, the ones that we have, so Neverland for anyone listening, we'll have three people throughout the room holding signs that say have, never have, never will. We'll shout out uh, uh, an, a something that people have done, like for instance, be in an open relationship. and. Mm -hmm. The uh, those in attendance, the participants will go to whichever where they they fall, have, never have, never will. And then once they get into that particular group, they have a moment to talk amongst themselves. Yeah. So yeah. Be, be in an open relationship, practice kink, date the same mm -hmm. sex. Um, mm -hmm. We thought that was a good way to have the room be able to see who also is, you know, LGBT oriented. Um, yeah. And then I always love shouting out to the audience and be like, and what do you guys want to know about each other? So we'll leave a couple space for them to um, share what they want to know about each other. And I'll okay, give them, so I can give them some examples too, if they need help. After every activity, and this is safe, maybe because when I very first got started in my career, I did all the activities that, that you know, they had the purpose sort of built in them. But I didn't, I wasn't asking the bigger questions and the bigger answers. For example, we know you and I have been doing this a long time. Um, when I came up with the activity, the idea was to get people better acquainted, right? To find, the, oh, wow, this person has a lot in common, find commonalities, you know, find when people are brave and saying, I'm the only person who's done this. And I'll stand over here by myself. Can I be truthful? So, you know, what is the purpose? And I'm asking you, and you don't have to say it now, but what is the purpose of Neverland for you at a biohacking conference? The, what the can you say to them at the end? The, the purpose, this, this activity still feels like a warm up to me. It's kind of getting them like moving and around and seeing who's in the space and also giving them, yeah, that opportunity to have, um, to realize some commonality amongst each other and yeah. to have a moment to even connect over that commonality. Yeah. Do you know how um, you've been in relationships before? Do you know all the firsts, right? You just like the first time showing skin or the first time like sharing a bathroom or the first time like it's all of these firsts. And if you've been in a relationship long enough, you're just like, yeah, it's my partner. I can do anything I want in front of this person, right? By the end of your 90 minute workshop, they'll be so comfortable with being themselves. I mean, ask, imagine, imagine someone go, have you ever done this kinky thing? You're like, damn it, what? <laughs> So, of course, a few of them are not going to tell the truth in the beginning, right? And so to watch that arc of them being comfortable, mm. right? And not the people around, but literally being comfortable with being themselves in spaces. What I'd like to hear is, you know, the importance of being comfortable helps you make these type of decisions faster. Because mm. people are like, yeah, what, what is all this for? Mm. You do know what I'm saying? So that's that's the thing. It's it's after each, you know, you're, you're, we're, we're pointing to we're, we're pointing heavily to a thing that afterwards you can say, they go, I get why she did all of this. Mm. Well, and then if you're po 
pointing to comforts, yeah. then it's, um, you know, that's the whole thing of regulating their nervous systems. Perfect. Perfect. So again, like the, the benefits of that, you know, and all of these, I don't care who you do this uh, with, it doesn't matter. Everyone feels like, damn it, why they didn't ask that? You know, or oh, well, that was easy to answer, right? Well, I don't want anyone to know, no, I do that. I mean, do you remember when we did UU, Underground Unattached? And we say, okay, next one. Have ever been married? Have? Never have, never will. And it was like, okay. <laughs> and then you had all these people, which was so interesting about you and I, if you don't mind me telling this, you can cut this out if you don't want it. Um, but you told me once, I wouldn't date someone unless they'd been married before. And I thought that was the most brilliant thing. Because, yeah, right, you got like, I used to hey, never, right. yeah, yeah, I used to I never want to. I never wanted to be anyone's first wife. <laughs> I think that was brilliant. Like, get this practice round out the way. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> anyway, so you saw people going, okay, right? And then, all right, children, have, never have, never will. And then the people never will, like, okay. You know, just people being comfortable. But how? I mean, really, how can you get someone who you feel is proper for you if you can be honest, right, with who you are and what you want? And so this is like, you're being audacious and saying, this is what I want. This is what I stand for. Instead of being this sort of just out anything, do I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out later. It's like, nah, dude, that's not going to happen on me. So anyway, I thought that was, you know, if you're, if, if you have a purpose behind each um, activity, so you have Neverland, keep going. I don't want to take all your time. The, the next one is prompted questions. Uh, mm -hmm. This is, Ken is inspiring this one. So um, one of the prompted questions that we have and, and the prompted questions are yeah, to have them dive deeper in an yeah. experience with a partner. So they'll be partnered and yeah. they'll be rotating. So they'll be in lines and they'll be rotating um, while also taking space. So nobody is distracting you directly beside you as the other two pairs engage next to you. And so one of the questions is talk about a friend you love who lives far away. Okay. Okay, that's beautiful. What is this app? What is this for? So this is again for them to um, deepen into a connection with somebody to to drop in um, not surface level questions and to and have them have that experience with each other. And I'm I'm gonna keep asking this. I'm gonna keep because this is what clients ask me, right? They always ask, and what does that do? Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so then we move into this activity number five, which is actually something that's still coming together, but I, this is good to talk it out. So mm -hmm. it's called instrumental and expressive. It's a spinoff. We, we had it as giving and receiving. However, there's this, um, there's been scientific studies to show that the that polarities are much there's so many more ways of looking at polarities than just masculine and feminine and actually okay. even masculine and feminine can even limit us inside of that so this activity is instrumental and expressive um, the group will be divided up into two separate categories so the people who are instrumental half of the room is instrumental half of the room is expressive and okay. they are the um, instrumental ones will spread out throughout the space and they will shut their eyes and there'll be some okay. be beautiful music playing. And then the okay. expressives will um, will and the, again, the, the instrumentals, their eyes are shut. And so the expresses will be um, coming up to them and sharing what they um love they'll be expressing what they love about humanity okay. by that person's eyes are shut and then at the end of that um when they're complete if the if the other person is okay with being touched um they'll have their yeah. hands out open if they don't want to have any touch they can put their um arms across their front of their chest and if they're open once they're done once the expressive is done sharing that with them, they'll squeeze their hands and that person who is the instrumental will open their eyes and they'll have a moment of contact with each other. Okay. And, and then they'll continue moving on to the next person and then we'll switch. So then the um, instrumental become the expressives and the expressives become the instrumental. We'll talk about that for a second, right? And I'm, I'm going to always, now I don't care who from now on, any facilitator that you bring in, 
right? Um, it's okay to ask as many times and why and why and why and why and why because at the root you can say it does this. So the game that I made up, remember, gone in sixty seconds, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you want to make up when you're if, if you're listening and you're trying to figure out activities to make up. I make up all my own. Um, and there's a reason why. It's uh, one, I I love creating. Um, two, you don't have to worry about someone saying you took my thing. <laughs> uh, and um, and then three, um, I start with purpose first. So I take something like a famous movie, or I take something like a famous idea, and I refer. I say, okay, like Neverland, right? You know, that's Peter Pan. Okay, great. So we'll call him Neverland, never have, or have, never have, never will, right? Gone in sixty seconds was a movie. Okay, great. Let's put sixty seconds on the clock. Okay, there's an A and there's a B. You have partners. One's going to be A and one's going to be B. A goes first, B listens, we put 60 seconds on the clock. And A, what I want you to do is I want you to tell your entire life story in 60 seconds, go. And do it just like that, put the clock in the middle, uh, right? And then we'll switch. And sometimes I say, okay, after the both have gone, you have 30 seconds each to tell them what you remember about each other. Now, it gets people talking. The purpose of that, right, is to listen to what people decide to tell you what's important about their lives. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then that goes into another activity, right? Because our lives are so much more um, than what we decide to remember. Our lives are so much more than our benchmarks or our successes. Our lives are so much more than our titles. You know what I mean? And so to have a different life is to remember the story differently, right? It's not necessarily to go after different things, right? For example, have you ever had a friend apologize to you. Now you, you loathe this person because they did something that you thought was just so disrespectful or out of the room of normal that you couldn't even be in the same room with it. But as soon as they apologized, it was, I, I, I miss Sherry. She's just, she's just, uh, and that's going around and changing history. And you can't do that. You don't have to change tomorrow. You can change yesterday by understanding what happened with that by apologizing or accepting apology. You can do that. And so by remembering stories differently, you can have a much more fulfilled life. So these activities are leading towards something. So when I ask you about this one, I'm always, always going to ask you, what is the purpose of this? And you'll tell me, and I go, and what does that do? And mm. you'll tell me, what does that do? I like to play the game with my facilitators is going as deep as I can. We're, we deepen, right? Mm -hmm. We'll just go back and forth until we find the core of what this activity actually does. And that is the true value. That's the absolute value of that activity because you should be able to say it in a sentence. Mm. So that's what I would do in my activities, no matter what it is. In fact, I love to have um, the the gone in 60 seconds. I forgot about gone in 60 seconds. That was a, that was a yeah. great one as well. Okay, yeah. so so we go through the expressive instrumental. The the idea behind this one is to use it as an opportunity to get them to move beyond uh, or to reframe polarities. So it's not just seen as masculine and feminine. There's much more depth right. inside of that, um, and mm -hmm. have them play with those polarities in a unique and different way. And what does that do? Um, I think it 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 broadens their perspective in this limiting way of how things need to be or should be in this idea of masculine and femininity. Awesome. And what does that do? You go on to it. And what does that do? Why um, is that it, important? It frees people. It frees people into um, labeling them themselves in some way of like, you know, so often they tell women that, you know, well, if you leave, like you make sure that you be feminine when you go out with him and, mm -hmm. and don't talk about, you know, your work in that way and make sure you let him lead. And so it's, it's essentially in a whole reframing for, to bring out more of their own authenticity. All right. And last time, just to see if we can go in deeper. Why is that important? Bring out your own authenticity. Because that's how you can more deeply connect with somebody um, and discover true compatibility. Boom. That's great. If you said that this activity boils down to discovering true compatibility, boom. But it's got to be so simple. It's got to be so simple. The best speech I've ever seen on TED Talk was a guy who was teaching us how to tie the shoes. And we're all walking with him. And we're all doing this shoe thing with him, right? In our minds. And he goes, how many of y'all take the you know, around this way, around the ab, rabbit ear? And everyone's like, yeah, he goes, you're doing it wrong. That's why you have to double knot it. <laughs> he said, you're supposed to take it around this way. And I go, holy shit. 
I couldn't even believe that I was doing around all these years. Yes. I'm not kidding. And he showed you, he was like, when you pull it, it should go this way. And it goes that way. He's, that's why you're having trouble with it. And his point in his two minute, three minute speech, the best speech I'd ever heard was three minutes long. His point was, if you're doing this wrong, imagine what other things that if you just did just a little bit will change your life forever. And he gets off saying, I'm like, holy, oh my God. Oh my God. He that did that is, with shoestrings. That's great. So you don't that's... have to complicate your, It's brilliant. You don't have to complicate your activities. In fact, I make up activities just every day because I know the purpose is go really deep with the purpose. We're finding true compatibility. Now you don't have to you don't have to tell them about it. But it you know, then when you reveal it to them, they go, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Because that was your true absolute value of the activity. Anyway, I'm nerding out right now. I love this. Okay, so that's that's essentially the rough draft that we have this far. Um, yeah. You know, we have some other prompted questions. Um, another way of bringing them into close. We're still fine tuning that. What are what are the best? So should I? After we have, I, I love. Okay, so taking each of the activities, drilling it down to the why. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? What are the best ways to prepare myself? to be ready for that moment. Okay. Do you mean prepare as in like rehearsal, like remembering your script or prepare just to be like energy wise? Should I have a script? Well, you have your opening story. So yeah, you're going to have that, you know? Okay. It's okay. like your, yeah, but that'll, that'll hopefully be two minutes or less opening story, you know? Uh, but each of these activities have stories with them and they don't, you should have them. Stories are the best way, again, for people to learn things. You don't forget a good story, right? And that is to say, for you and Ken, you won't forget a good storyteller. Mm. Like our, you know, our friend that we share, oh, Elliot, right? Mm -hmm. he, he and I at the time became best friends because we met at UU. And he mm -hmm. said, I've never seen a facilitation this way. He said, I have to know who this person is. And we became friends because of it. People don't forget good storytellers, man. So attach a story for reason for doing for each activity and they will not forget the purpose and the theme because you want it to outlive, you want to outlive, um, you want it to outlive when you all leave, it should be like sitting on the hearts of their minds, their, their beings, um, you know, when they leave. I do this with memory techniques that I teach people. I do this with like, hey, go home and try this with your partner. So you want something called a tangible takeaway is to give them something to do, not necessarily homework. It's not like you grade it, right? But give them something that will for sure work. I'll give you an example, right? If something works, it works every time. So if I say, hey, you have a small business yet? Yeah, do you have an email tracker? Well, why would I need that? Well, because you know how long it takes to write a, like a really good email? A long time, yeah. And what happens if you don't hear back from the person? You assume they didn't open it, right? Or you assume that they read it and they just didn't like your email, right? Yeah. So what do you do? Well, I write another email. Exactly. Spend more time. What if I told you that they just didn't even read it? They didn't get it. What if you just change the subject line and see the same one? You know how much time you save? That's why I have an email tracker. And sometimes when I see them open it, I'll call the customer. They go, wow, that's interesting. I'm just looking at your email. Now, that is a tool I gave you that works for sure. That's why it's important to have an email tracker. It's, you know, well, okay, so good. So what are some tools for sure works every time that you can go home and try? So if it's relationship, I'm dealing with men or women. I'll give them to prompt your, like, ask your partner this and then shut up. They'll say, wow, God, you're great to talk to. Well, what they meant to say is that you're a great listener, but it's the same thing. Mm. Because people want to relate to themselves. Yeah, I do this all the time. I'm the quiet one on dates so I can let the person talk. And it works every time. So anyway, um, I would give them, so, so, so how would you prepare? Because I, I want to kind of go through this. One is, is this is not prepared before I forget. Make sure you give them something that works they can take with them. This is your gift to them. Just like we used to give them the little $5 coffee. Or yes. Just coffee. Oh, I love that. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. This is a gift to them. After you get done and they had a great experience, give them something to take with them so they'll remember the, um, the experience and use it in their real uh, everyday lives. How do you prepare? Um, is one, have a story for each, a small story for each thing, right? So they can understand what these activities do, right? Uh, right before you go on, take as much time as you can to yourself and go into space. I can't stand walking in a space I haven't been in before. It's hard. So if I'm going into a theater, I'll walk around all, because I don't want to go on the aisles. I'm the only, uh, I'm a speaker that didn't stay on the stage if you haven't seen my thing. I'm all over the place. So I need to go through, okay, 
so I could feel it before all of the participants come in. So whether 2,000 people or 15,000 people coming in, I like to walk through the space. With you, it's the same way. Wherever you're going to be uh, in that workshop space, walk through, figure out this is where the flip chart is going to be. If you're using slides, I don't know, just walk through the space, even if it's a day before to get familiar with it or an hour before. That helps with your nerves. Nerves are good, but that really helps with you not going like, not being off guard. It's mm-hmm. to be in the space, even in, right? Mm-hmm. That's my meditation that I take, you know? Mm-hmm. And lastly, leave uh, a little bit of room for it not being prepared. Because remember, we're not trying to preach and we're not trying to be experts. Everybody wants to be expert today. Everybody. Until the expert doesn't know what they're talking about. You're always going to come on a case where it doesn't work, right? And so, again, that's what we're calling it an experience. I facilitated a UU dating experience in, I'm sorry, experiment in New York. Right? I want to call it an experience, but you know what? It was an experiment because this is what we found. Do, 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 do. And we call it an experience. When you call it an I'm sorry, experiment, what you find is this is what we're looking for, but this is what we found. Mm, yeah. That's what yes. we found. Yes. Is this is what we're looking for, but today we hope to find treasures, the ones that we didn't even know that were there. That's the whole point of it all. Right. Is that if I'm coming, I'm getting what I'm, you know, if I'm going after and I get what I expect, right. There's no adventure there. And I don't know everything. Right. I only know for the people that this has worked for, but now I get to find, I get to discover with you the documentary that I'm not going to say who I'm doing it with because it's not in the press yet. And you know it already. We talked about it. Um, I get to play the straight man and the straight man is the person who doesn't know everything. That's the point. I get to go in this community and ask questions because if I come in and say, I'm the expert working with these young people, right? Two things will happen. One is people stop listening. You don't want to say you're an expert in a room full of brilliant people. Okay. <laughs> you're here. We get it. Okay. So the close your ears. And the second thing is you have no room to learn. And if you are the facilitator and you're not learning, you're still doing it wrong. So that's what I would say is to allow yourself to be in the space and also allow yourself to, to experience the experiment that you're facilitating. I love that because it's, it's comparable to the actual dating process is yeah. all an experiment, like getting to know yeah. somebody. What do you talk about? How is this date? How is that date? Uh, it's all an experiment. I mean, life is an experiment <laughs> if we even dive even yeah. deeper into that. So acknowledging yeah. that and bringing it up and allowing us as facilitators to discover something throughout the experiment and allowing them to be in discovery of it, us to do it together. So we're partners inside of it. I'm partnering with the audience to create yeah. a great experiment experience um, yeah. And this is an experiment together that we're doing and asking them to participate in it as well. Yeah, well, also the only difference in this experience and the ones that you typically facilitate, right? Are the stakes are a little different. That's it. Right. That's all. Yes. On planes. I just got off a plane myself. Um, they still have those bags where people used to throw up. Right. Because the idea was that planes made you sick. Right. We all accepted that there were normal travel now and people don't get as sick as they used to get on planes. Right. What's the difference between you being in a plane and a car? It's the passenger. Not much. You get down or you get in the police, go on the plane, you sit down, you put your seatbelt on and you don't move until the riot is over. Typically, unless you have to go to the bathroom. Pretty much the same. Right. Public transportation is pretty much the same. Sit down, put your seatbelt on, take your seatbelt off, deboard. Pretty much the same. Okay. The stakes are different. If I'm in the air, I'm like, damn, I could fall and die. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which is me, right? So there's nothing really that's different. People are still going to be uh, magnetized, if you will, right? They're going to be uh, captivated by your personality, right? Your glow, your inner glow, right? And you're showing them things that they haven't done before, right? And what is the, again, we go back, we begin, what is the dating do- dojo? What does dating have to do? Right with biohacking, what does it have to do with? I don't know if you guys are uh, dabbling into social emotional learning. Uh, what does it have to do with? Well, again, it's your relationship with yourself. Mm-hmm. And if you can prove to me that the most important thing is the relationship I have with myself, and knowing about this does this, 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 and this, I will give you the floor. I will give you my attention. Right. That's that's the that's the point. I'm proving this today. Mm-hmm. You know? And if you end with a story about how these activities have changed your own life, right? Again, because this is what I hate hearing. 
because it never lasts. Watch this. I did these and I got the man of my dreams. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Take this program I mean, and you'll meet him. Listen, listen even well, and this is not to shit on any, uh, you know, any of those programs out there, but there are a lot of husband, wife teams or like girlfriend, boyfriend, or partner teams. And they show up in the space and they're like, yeah, we're here and just take a moment, just breathe in with us. And then six years later, they're, they're not together. So, you know, yeah. So, so watch this. I'm going to teach you how, remember how this is, I'll say this last thing and I'll shut up here. The reason why you, you was so dope underground unattached when we decided to do this together is we made a promise that other people would say, we promise connection, right? That's in our, our marketing. We promise a connection. Well, after our, you know, our uh, activities, our events, the connection that people had was either with a lover, right? Potential partner, mm-hmm. with a business partner. People found their best friends there. I found my mm-hmm. best friend there, right? Or themselves. We, pr- we promise you a connection. So if you can prove, hey, listen, you know, I can't promise you that all relationships last, but we're going to work on the one that lasts the longest. Boom. Oh. Mm. Brilliant. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So then, then you have you have a, a better buy-in if you want to make you know mess with that way. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And when you're in an experiment, it's so easy to go inside and to discover more about you and how you're responding to a specific experience. And yes. around the topic of dating, because dating is tender and the subject matter while it's starting to be more, people are talking about it more. It generally is something that's neglected, you know, even so much that we grew up in societies where it was like, you know, we knew that most couples met in the workplace. I mean, this is before we've all gone remote, but most couples met at work. And yet it was like, no dating, (laughs) no dating in the office. So it's a completely, um, it's been unacknowledged by the masses for so long. And now we're giving space to actually include it inside of a major conference, which to me feels a bit revolutionary. Okay. Can I give one? That's brilliant. Can I give one more based on what you just said? Cause like, you know, it's, it's, it's this conference. Everyone knows how important it is. And this is the thing too, like no matter how well you do in your career uh, or in your business and how well you do it, like in, in status in society, like, Partnerships are important, right? You want to embark on new parts of, you know, life with someone. In fact, if you go somewhere and it's the most gorgeous place, you grab your phone, not so you can look at it later. Do you go back and just go through your phone? Yeah, that was beautiful. Bali was amazing. No, first thing you do is share with someone. So we know that we want to share life with someone. We want to share our experiences with someone or a group of people. We know that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we know that we're all looking for that. This is an opportunity for these people who are experts in their field in other ways, right? To teach Christina, right? And Ken about love, about connection in a way that you hadn't experienced before. That's what we call experiment. So now when I'm talking to teachers and parents, I don't have any kids of my own yet, even though I've been speaking, you know, I'm saying for 15 years, right? I allow them, I say, hey, I'm not the expert. I said, combined, we've got hundreds of years or whatever the hell, right, uh, of experience. And we're going to figure this out today, you know, and something like that. then everyone becomes, right, uh, as you say, like you want to participate in your own healing, right? Everyone becomes a part of this. And people will always support. I got this from my friend Javier Sanchez. People will always support when they feel they help create. And so if you all were brilliant, right? So if you all were, that's uh, was not mine. If you all were doing this together, right? It becomes more of a community effort. There's just a ways to do this different than they hadn't seen it before, right? Because in our capitalistic polychronic society where people care more about schedules than relationships, right? It's always about status. It's always about, I know something you don't. It's always about, I did this. I put myself on my, 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 you know, my own bootstraps and I became something and you can't do. And that's bullshit. We see a magazine cover, right? And it has on it Billie Eilish or Lady Gaga, right? But we don't see of 137 people that make that person who they are. Mm -hmm. And so we obsess over, I got to do it myself. It's not true. It takes community. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you can let go of the idea that you have to do it yourself, 
and rely on people and start to trust people. Like we can change how we do workshops from now on. Say, hey, listen, I'm relying on you all to do, right? To help us with the answer, right? Mm-hmm. This is what we found so far, but we are helping to discover something that we have not even, you know, discovered before. I think you have a better time with them. Mm, it's it's so on point of what I had written down yesterday. Uh, it, you know, as speaking to like quote unquote experts of sure, I've studied relationships for the past seven years and I don't consider myself necessarily an expert in in it. And everybody in the space, I imagine have they've all been in a relationship. So even potentially asking like who in who in the room has been in a relationship? Great. Look around everybody, everybody here. And uh, you all are currently single at this moment in time, which means that you have probably gone into relationship. You have discovered love. You have deepened with that particular person. And then you actually have another skill set where you've ended that relationship and and moved on from there. So you guys are all experts in the space you're all you have something everybody here has something to teach so yeah. essentially all everybody who raised their hand you're who feels that though they have something to teach around relationships i imagine the whole room raises their hand and then That's also good. okay so now we have all those these teachers in the space who's willing to be a student any any students any people That's willing students. to be students in this and then have yeah. them and see who is a great yeah. amazing Um, so, so that kind of is, um, reconfirming or seeing that everybody in the room is a teacher and everybody in the room is a student. And that also emphasizes the experimental process of the whole entire event. Something I'm, I'm, I'm messing with That's brilliant, Christina, something I'm messing with, I know I'll have three minutes left is, um, that my friend, uh, and her partner split and, um, though this time Portland might be, but. Uh, we we're talking about how people that you date are your gurus. They're your gurus. Um, they're teaching you something, or you're teaching them something, and they're master gurus, dude. Like that's why it feels so heavy when they, when you feel lost that way. Um, but it'd be silly. You know, if you're mad at your ex, oh, this person hurt my feelings, or this person did this, and you just stay mad at this person, right? Now, watch. You're not meant to stay with that person, not at all. Can you imagine that if you were in a restaurant and you walk with your friend, right? And you're like, oh God, what? Go this way, go this way. What? That's Miss Johnson. What's the problem? It's my fourth grade teacher. She never got over the fact that I went to the fifth grade. Like, that'd be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how we treat relationships. Uh-huh. When you see the person who went across the street, it's like, dude, you're in a different grade. And all the things you're going to learn, you'll take with you, but you still have things to learn. At 40, you look at your 30 year old self, like, oh my God, I cannot believe I thought I knew things. Right. And at 50, you go, oh my God, I'm so glad I'm not in my 40s anymore. So, what does that say? Mm. That says that your your teachers are the people that you're dating because they're teaching you how to relate to yourself and the world. Like, this is amazing if you look at at the people that you're dating as the master gurus and even the people that you've broken their hearts. You taught them something so important about how to operate in the world. Right. Mm-hmm. It's easier to say that you have t- trauma, right? Can you just say that you have teachings? Mm-hmm. What if we reframe that? Because if I just focus just on the trauma, as opposed to I learned something, right? Then they, what I'm vibrating out is how to continue to cycle the idea and the feeling experience of hurt, as opposed to taking the tools and reframing and say, now I get to experience help, right? And how to help others. So there's a, if you're feeling heartbreak, from a relationship you're not in anymore, what you're doing is leaning toward the trauma as opposed to the teaching. And those who get on with their lives, meaning move on, right? They're not lying. They're not ignoring. They're saying, oh, I get why that was important. As my uh, first mentor, Ed Blunt, would say, if you're not currently experiencing growing pains, you probably aren't growing. So there's a way that we can work our relationships and all the teachings that we're doing and teach other people. Like there's I'm so pissed that I can't be there right now. <laughs> like, I want to be at this biohacking conference. So bad now. Oh, I wish uh, you were here. This is so helpful. Yeah. I think what I'm next going to do is put the program that I had in mind aside for a moment and right. go into like the whys and like what, yes. what, um, what relationship 
um, concepts, do I believe that it's important for them to, uh, to know about that have helped me? And yeah. then looking at those concepts rather around, cause you, you brought up attachment, you know, that, that story around being in a restaurant and the fourth grade teacher of, you know, I left her and I went to fifth grade. That's a play on attachment. And mm-hmm. that's what essentially holds like, you know, tightens a lot of us is these ideas mm-hmm. that we hold on to. And so yeah. it just makes me think of, of going back and looking at these, you know, from polarities, we have a, an activity based around um, reframing polarities. Um, another activity can be around attachment. And so using these concepts to then once I have the, the whys within them and then going back and like, okay, what are the best activities that then highlight those um, uh, create those experiences yeah. and then what stories, how does that, you know, cause that, that then creates a story because I have a personal connection to each of those whys, um, mm-hmm. why those particular concepts, because they have supported me in some way, or I've heard a story of how they've supported someone else in some way and mm-hmm. looking at it as it's a interactive theatrical experience because everybody wants to be entertained at the end of the day. So we're there to essentially entertain them. I even, you can say that your significant other is your guru. I also sometimes preference it as that when I'm in relationship, like you're my entertainer, (laughs) like we are here to entertain each other (laughs) as well. Um, And I like to be entertained in a way that makes me critically think and deepen and and feel pleasure and excitement. So let's do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all, I mean, in, in, you know this already, because um, I don't know when you went into this, but um, is that the more questions you're asking them, right? Because you just, you, you can never ever, when I first started teaching, I would ask questions with the answer in mind. Yeah. And ever so often there'd be someone, an adult, a kid who would just say something. I was like, oh, that's not where I was going. Right. And then they throw me off a little bit. I'm like, uh, but if you, if you're smart, you realize that uh, sometimes or most times they're going to say something that takes it to a higher level, to a higher level, right? Because I'm a, I'm a comedian, I'm a humorist, so I can write bits and I know where to take the audience, right? But when you're dealing with connection, right, you don't know where it's going to go. Mm. Because what was cool yesterday might not be cool tomorrow. Like we're all learning. We're learning organisms, right? I need to know more from the audience. There's no way that Christina, who's however years old, has all the answers to life in a room full of people who might have traveled all over the world and lived different places, who might have had every kind of partner that that you can imagine. Even in your, even in our, our knowledge that we have, this this wealth of knowledge that you and I have, right? Someone's going to teach us something. Someone's going. It happens every single time. I learned something last night. First two presentations were amazing. Were amazing. Third one, I was like, damn it, I learned something. I learned something. I tried to do this, the, the same presentation three times. Like, dude, these are different audiences. Why would you do that? Mm. I was like, oh my God. I learned. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? Don't do mm. that again. I was like, so. So to wrap it, um, one last question. So now I have about a month before the program. Yeah. Yeah. Do you suggest that I take like schedule time on my calendar? to prepare a little bit each day? Um, if that's your process. What's your process? Well, it's in development. <laughs> so okay. so I'll give you an example of what I'm saying. I'll give you an example of what I'm saying. For some reason, my best ideas come far away from my pen and pad. Far away. Showers. I'm like, damn it. I, I got a great idea, but I'm taking a shower. I got a great idea, but I'm running. Well, I've been known to go run a few miles and then I'll, I'll take my phone. I'm just, I'll stop breathing hard. <laughs> and I'm writing my ideas out. Why? Because my best ideas come when I'm running. Mm. I solve all of my problems when I'm running. So when I say what your process is, it doesn't work for me to schedule time. That's how my creativity comes. For some reason, creativity is like this gorgeous woman who's kind of like, you can't get me. You know, it's like, it's like, you know what I mean? And it's like, I, I'm just like, can we talk? Can we, can we go on a date? And she's like, well, just I mean, I don't know, maybe next week, maybe. And I, I, but I can't plan. It's just like she just shows up in the mm. most inconvenient times for me. Meaning, I don't have places to write it down. It's like at four o'clock in the morning, you get an idea. You're like, Fuck, I gotta wake up and write this down. Your eyes are adjusting. You're like, last night it was chicken scratch, but I'm sure I was onto something. Like, 
That's where all my ideas come. So whatever your process is, mine is to run, right? So that I can clear my mind. So then things come to me. But what I suggest heavily is you keep your eye, your activities that you have, but you want to get better at is the explanation of them. Is to get better at is to answering why these things are important. So at the end of it, I had this holistic, I had this full meal, right? After the full meal, I come out from your workshop, you can workshop, and I go, oh my God, I will never look at relationships the same. Mm. Okay, yeah. I think what I'm gonna do for me is is put like daily reminders on my calendar that I will Mm -hmm. like to plan it and it can happen outside of that scheduled plan, but just so that I'm on track that I'm preparing within this month and I'm not getting distracted with all the other tasks that a CEO needs to to do to run a business. We both run run companies. My apologies for cutting you off. Uh, We both run companies. We both got our hands on a lot of different things. My, My suggestion is, um, because I'm only, I can only work on what has been working for me. I can schedule things every day. And unless I'm in the habit of it, you know how long it takes to form a habit. Read really Atomic Habits, everyone. It's brilliant. It's the only book that talks about forming a habit that's less than 28 to 20, or 21 to 28 days. Anyway, it takes a while to form a habit. What you're saying now is I've got a month to prepare. I'm going to, I'm going to develop a habit of studying that I usually don't do. And I'm going to be ready then. It's like, you, not that you can't do it. I'm just saying you're, you're going a bit against the grain, right? What's helpful? You know, when I do the most work, sometimes I just want someone right here and I'll just be like doing my work where they're talking. I'm like, why is that a thing? Well, Sean, because you need someone in the room while you're working. Oh, I didn't know that about myself. Now you do go to a workspace or work away. And someone people talk, I am not listening to you at all, but I am taking notes on my own stuff, whatever it is. Or you might say, hey, listen, Brenda, yeah, Thursday, can I go over this activity with you? Why? Because you do best with APs, accountability partners, because then you know you're hitting your benchmarks, right? You're hitting Mm. your, your... do you know what I'm saying? I just want to make it easier for yourself. The idea is to put less friction and distance between your goals. And if you make it something outside of your normal, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. That I'm sure. What I would do is I go, okay, I got a big speech coming up. And I'm like, Sean, you don't even do this regularly. Like the way that you're about to learn. How do you usually learn this thing? Yeah. Do it that way. Right. What's the easiest way for you to do it? Hearing my speech. Okay. Record it and listen to it while you run. Like don't do this thing. It's going to take, because you have to learn a new skill now. And you're not going to be prepared for that. And that's why people procrastinate. Well, that was good too. Just that little hint right there of recording myself, giving the yeah. activities or, or speaking and then listening back to myself, um, yeah. sharing. That's how I learn. Mm-hmm. Just I'm audio. Like I, you know, I'm an audio learner. So I have to listen to it and I'll just run it back. And soon it's like, you know, you hear your song. You're like, you have to practice a song. No, you know the words of the song. Why? Because you listen to it all the time. It's not the same as practicing. You're like into it. Do the same thing my speeches. I can tell you, I'm, I can tell you and I just, an hour, you're talking about an hour and a half speech I memorized. Okay. So you can do the same thing. With your yeah. opening story. Okay, cool. Cool. Perfect. That's yeah. great. I know we're running cool. uh, short on time. Thank you yes. so much for prepping me and sharing this experience so vulnerably. It's actually even vulnerable for me to, <laughs> to share um, me getting ready with everybody who's listening <laughs> to this. Um, and but I'm glad you're doing that. I am so glad that you're sharing that part. Thank <laughs> you. I, yeah. the yeah. I feel like, yeah, it is a part of the process. And I, it's encouraging. You know, I still remember before when you whizzed in to um, <laughs> prepare me for the first annual Feminine Weapon Day, which, by the way, what that was January 30th of 2013, uh, meaning <sighs> that the 10th annual Feminine Weapon Day is coming around the corner. And you did that, that experience I'll say is like, I was so nervous. And you're like, I was like, can you support me? And you're like, yeah. And you would whiz in. And I gave that speech that day. I had my clipboard in my hand just in case I forgot my lines. And by the time I got towards the end of it, I, I was in my, in my quote unquote speech. I had, you know, I was sharing that, you know, this day is about overcoming a fear. I'll get to the fear in a bit. And by the time I got to the fear, and to reveal that fear, it was gone. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this is not as bad. I could feel like I could just sit here and talk to you guys. You're not as scary. <laughs> and but be- right before that moment, why I decided to get over that fear is uh, David Guillaume, who's a teacher at the Kabbalah Center in New York City. I was 
sharing about my fear of public speaking. He said, your ego is so big. And I was like, what? <laughs> What, 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 what do you mean? My ego is so big. No, it's not, I'm not, my ego is not big. It should be bigger. That's why if my ego was bigger, I would be okay to speak on the stage. And he was like, no, you're so self-absorbed. You're hoarding information. You could really help everybody. And instead you're worrying about being perfect. So that was, that was like the kick inside of me to, I, I got to go do this. I got to get over it. So, you know, in sharing my own process, you know, I hope that it'll inspire somebody else that, you know, this is the, the, the fear that most people have that is, I don't even know if it's so talked about so much. I've heard that this is the number one fear, but that's not reminded to people often. You just said, a, you just said the most, oh my God, I needed to hear this say, thank you. Because very few of us want to be a cog in somebody's journey, right? We want to be the reason that they succeed. And that is very selfish. We want them to go, I talked to Sean and now I'm different. It's like, dude, you're a piece of this person's journey. And we both have to get over ourselves in that regard, right? And it's hard when you're a public speaker because you see the, you know, you see yourself on the marquee, you see yourself on the, the you know what I'm saying, the pamphlets or whatever. And you see it and it's, it's like you, 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 and then you went, this is room temperature, water, Mr. Day, all that bull. It's like, dude, you're a piece of, you're not the whole thing, right? You're not the cake, you're the cherry on me, like just chill out. And that's, that's what I needed to hear today. So thank you so much for that. Mm. I appreciate that. That was you're, good. You're welcome. Thank you. And are you taking, like, do you have any group programs happening now? If somebody did want to get access to Sean Derrick and all his wisdom? We just launched our new company. We do corporate storytelling. It's the most exciting thing that I've ever been a part of. Um, for all those who are listening, I am a storytelling coach. I've got a company called Speaker Hack. People would take an online course to learn the art and business of storytelling. Now we're doing corporate storytelling in spaces like biohacking um, so that people can learn how to um, tell a story uh, in a very short amount of time. And it helps you with um, meeting new people, right? Toasts at parties, interviews, right? Um, just the, the way that you relate to people, even retelling a story that you know, that you know about yourself in a way that is a lot more empowering, right? And we talked about a little bit today about transferring, you know, or I should say transitioning um, from trauma to teachings so that you're not, you're, you're it's not just about the pain, right? It's about, you know, what you learn from and helping other people. Um, so that is what I'm doing now. And uh, I'm not sure when this episode comes out, but I'll drop a link and then you all can, uh, you all can uh, join that experience. Perfect. I'll include that in the description of the podcast. Thank, Thank you, you so, much. so much, Sean, for your friendship, for your time, for your energy, for your interest, attention, <laughs> all the things. Um, it definitely is super supportive. And when you look at We Deepen, I hope you do see a bit of you because you are a, a seed that um, has just grown and reached so many, so many, so many people. And I imagine that is beyond just the support that you've given me, but the hundreds and thousands, thousands upon thousands of other people. <laughs> Christina, you are a light. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you. And I, and I appreciate growing with you. This is the most exciting time to be alive with you. So thank you so much. Mm, thank you. And thank you all for listening to another episode of Deepen with Christina. If you enjoyed the show, please rate it, subscribe, follow. It supports other people in finding it. And definitely go check out the calendar. Go check out wedeepen.com. There's lots of experiences and activities. And if you are listening to this before the biohacking conference or Unleash, I will be presenting the dating dojo at both of those activities. They're both listed on the calendar. They are both happening in September. So go check, check them out. And until next time, thank you, everybody. Bye.